everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I am so excited to be taking part in the Galaxy Girl Creations 1000 subscriber celebration hop. For this hop, we are scrap lifting one of Janet's beautiful layouts. There were so many layouts to choose from, but as soon as I saw this one, I knew that this was the one I wanted to scrap lift. I was also super lucky because Janet made a very in-depth process video for how to make this layout. So I really just had to follow along with Janet using my own colors and my own photos and she made it super easy for me. I will put the link to Janet's video in the description box so that you can check out Janet's very thorough description of how she approaches a layout like this and she gives so many different tips and ideas. For my layout, I am starting with a piece of white gessoed cardstock and I am using some Dilutions paint. I painted that big diagonal and then a little bit more of the green paint in the corner. I put some white splatters, some black splatters, and I even added in a little bit more of a different color green. That's some Waverly paint. And that was just to you know, add a little bit more variety of color in that diagonal. And I realized that the strip was a little too thin for the photos I had picked out. So I'm going back in and making it a little wider. The photos that I'm using are photos that I took of my daughter, Julia, when we were in Salem, Massachusetts. And for our trips to Salem, Massachusetts, I create whole albums, even though it's often only a day or two that we're there. And so I like to have a Halloween theme to the layouts that are in the album, even if they're not specifically Halloween layouts. Sometimes we're eating dinner and there's really nothing Halloween about it, but I still like to use something that's Halloween. So for this layout, I'm really using the traditional Halloween colors of green and orange and purple. So following along with uh, Janet's layout, I cut out a number of stars in different sizes. I used some dyes from my collection and I'm spraying them with some Tattered Angels sprays in purple. I actually, as you can see, I'm spraying the table and I'm dipping them into the spray. And I'm not trying to cover every little bit. I just want to get some color down there. I'm putting some Distress Oxide and Seedless preser Preserves over the top. And you can see I'm spraying them with water. I'm just trying a bunch of different things here. And then I go back in with Delusions spray, and that is a really, really intense spray. I love those sprays. And that's more of a bluish purple. Those are the completed stars. You can see I cut them out in different sizes, the way Janet did. Now I'm using a Sharpie, and I'm drawing two lines on the outside edge of each star. I very infrequently will use a Sharpie on my layout, almost never to make any kind of designs. I am always kind of afraid of drawing or doodling on my layouts. And I feel like because I was following along with Janet, I didn't have any fear of messing up because I knew that Janet did it successfully. So this was kind of a liberating experience. I used the Sharpie quite a bit on this layout. And I liked the way that it came out. I needed Janet's support in order to uh, have the courage. Janet used some rub-ons on her layout. I don't have any rub-ons that I thought would go with the stars, so I decided to just use a little bit of modeling paste and this Tim Holtz st stencil. And I'm not covering the whole star, as you could see. I'm just covering a couple of areas, and I'm not using a lot of modeling paste, just a little bit. And in that way, the stars don't need more embellishments because I really don't know what other embellishments to add to them. So I feel like that served a purpose of adding some texture and just making them look a little more interesting. I'm using some Tim Holtz Distress Oxide in black soot to ink the edges of all of the stars. You can see I have two different ink pads there. One is a really dark one and one is a little dried out. And so I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use, so I had them both available. Another thing that I'm often afraid to do on my layouts, other than in a very limited way, is put a lot of stamping on my backgrounds. So again, I use the power of Janet's example to pull out these. You can see I have many 
stamps that I have never used before. So I was really happy to break these out and get some stamping on a page. So I arranged some of the different stamps on the acrylic block and I tested it out on that piece of scrap paper. And now I'm going in and just finding a couple of places on the diagonal to add the stamping. And I really like the way that looks. I have to do it more often. I also pull out a little bat stamp and then I go around and add that little touch around the layout. So this layout is Halloween in theme, but it's a little more subtle than some of the other layouts that I make that are Halloween. The colors and the little bat and the wording is definitely Halloween, but to me, I feel like you might not notice it the minute you look at the layout. Maybe you would. I, that's just what I was thinking. Now I'm going back in with another Tim Holtz stencil and some, I think that's spice marmalade probably, and going around with the Distress Oxide and the Dauber, just the way Janet did on her layout, and I like the way that that looks. She suggested going from the larger dot to the smaller dot as you got farther away from your area of color, and I tried to do that. Down the bottom, I got a few larger circles, but that's fine. So in the spirit of stamping, I decided to pull out this stamp. It's just like a little teeny, teeny, tiny dot stamp, and I like the way that added to the stamping on the background. And I'm just doing exactly what Janet did. I'm pulling out a star stencil, and I'm adding some stars with the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide. And I'm keeping the stars close to the areas where I have the orange. I'm so happy for Janet that she has a thousand subscribers. That's such a great milestone in a scrapbooker's YouTube journey. Janet is such an amazing scrapbooker. She creates such beautiful pages and she's always thinking outside the box and she comes up with many of her own techniques. And I do love watching her channel and I've learned a lot from her. And even more important is what a wonderful person Janet is. She is so willing to share. When we're scrapbooking on Zoom, she often spends more time sending cut files to us or looking up information for others than she does getting to work on her own projects. Right now, I'm taking a class with her and Christina Sorge, and Janet's passion and willingness to share her story so that others can do the same is so inspiring. She's a very giving person, and I feel very fortunate to know her. Now on the layout, I'm doing something that's kind of a big deal for me. I've often seen people using markers to put borders around their layout, and I've honestly never done that before and always wanted to, but I was always afraid that I was going to ruin the layout if I did that. And Janet gave a great tip that when you're making the outline, you should pull the pen toward you, that it's easier to do it that way. And I feel that she was 100% correct. It made it very easy to do. Now I'm adding the stars back into the layout, or I should say into the layout. I have some really big ones, and I think there's four different sizes there. I decided that the biggest ones were just a little bit too big for the scale of the photos. And these photos are of my younger daughter, Julia. She's trying on a hat that we saw in a museum there. And it was a really cool idea. It was just a regular hat with some cable ties attached to the top so that they stuck straight out. It was extremely expensive, though. It was at least $100. It might have been more. So she opted to try it on <laughs> rather than purchase it. I added just a couple more of those stars in that spot just seemed like it needed a little bit more. And then I just decided that I wanted to add a little tiny mini cluster over here on the left. So I'm just putting everything that I put in the other clusters on the left. I put the stars, I put the stamping, I put the, the orange circles. Here I am putting a bat <laughs> and adding another bat on the bottom. And there's a piece of paper on the bottom there. It's a black 
circular piece of paper. I used that in another layout, or I, I didn't use it. I was going to use it in another layout. I cut it out for it, and I don't end up using it here, but I thought it looked interesting there for a little while. <laughs> and then the next day, I started working on this again. I went in with some green paint. I used the Dilutions paint and then also the Waverly paint. And I'm just going to add a couple of splatters as well. Just wanted to match the other clusters. Once that's done, I decided that I wanted to add, just like Janet did, another element along with the stars. Now she added more stars. I didn't have any other stars that I liked that would go with the layout. So I decided I was just going to add some circles. So I was just really kind of fooling around here with some sprays and some distress oxide. I wanted to make some circles and I wanted them to be orange, but I wanted them to be interesting. I didn't just want to cut them out of cardstock. So I'm just going in and just trying a bunch of different things. I liked that orange, but I wanted it to be a tiny bit brighter. So now I'm going in with some Waverly paint. And I'm just putting a little bit of paint in a very messy way on some areas of the paper. And I only use a very little bit of this paper. I thought I was going to be using a lot more, so I made a lot more. I'm adding some white splatters. And then after I add the white splatters, not even waiting for some of them to dry, I went back in again with the Distress Oxide. I didn't want the white splatters to be too white. And now I'm going to punch out five of each circle. So my idea here was to cut the circles and then I'm going to put some epoxy circles on the top. I have some in my stash and I don't use them as much as I should. So they're clear so you'll be able to see anything that I have done on the circles. And here I am kind of carrying on with the idea of putting circles on the page. I didn't mention before, on the orange circles that I put on the layout, Janet had suggested that you go around twice with your pen in order to you know, make a black circle. And so I did the same thing on these circles. I went around twice and then I added a, a little bit of that uh, little the kind of curly cue, almost stitching look that I have around the border in certain spots. So I added that as well, just to give it a little interest. It's very small. I'm popping up my pictures on some foam. And now I'm going in with my title. My older daughter, Danielle, came up with this title. She looked at the photos and I said to her, what am I going to call this? And she Googled puns for points or something like that. I don't know. And she came up with point taken. And I thought that was cute. I honestly had no idea what I would have called it if she hadn't thought of that. So I'm using some thickers. These thickers are super, super sticky. They are the stickiest letters I think I've ever used. They did not want to be moved around. So where they are is where they had to stay. A few moments ago, I tried to dull down this color of orange. It's really, really, really bright. So I tried to dull it down a little bit with some gelatos that I had, an orange gelato. And I probably should have done the Sharpie lines first before I did that. I had to keep taking my Sharpie and doodling on a piece of paper to get the gelato residue off the Sharpie. But uh, I thought that adding a couple of little lines to the letters would help tie it in with the rest of the layout. And here I am putting those clear acrylic circles over the top of just some of those circles that I cut out. I didn't do it to all of them, but I wasn't sure how many I was going to need. So I cut out five and then put the acrylic toppings on just three of each size to start with. Now I'm just kind of spreading them around. You may see in the final pictures that I moved some of them around. I do tend to do that. After I'm done with a layout, I'll often the next day start peeling things up and moving them around. And I believe I did that with some of the dots. For the smaller dots, I made more because I felt I would use more of those than the larger ones. 
and now I'm just sprinkling them around the layout and uh, in a moment I'm going to be attaching them down with the ATG adhesive and that held them in place perfectly. I, I keep these epoxy circles in my stash because I think that sometimes when you don't have any embellishments that go with a particular kit you can make your own little embellishments by putting a piece of pattern paper behind them. In the end I was really not happy with how bright the letters were so using a tip that I know many of us have gotten from Missy Whitten I went in with some gesso and I just dulled them down a little bit. And now that I'm happy with the placement, I, like I said I would, I'm going in with the ATG adhesive and I'm attaching them down. Now that those are attached down, I gave it a little shake to make sure everything was indeed glued down. I'm cutting out four photo corners. I'm just using that same orange paper that I cut the circles from and I am going to be attaching those to the layout. I dropped one and lost it and then I found it was right there on the layout. As soon as I attached the first photo corner down, I realized that I forgot to ink the edges with the Distress Oxide. So I went back and I inked each one of the photo corners. And that is the final touch to this layout. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Please take a look at the description box and you'll see links to all of the other ladies who are following along with the Galaxy Girls Creation 1000 subscriber celebration. Congratulations to Janet. I hope if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. And I will see all of you again soon. Take care, everybody, and have a great day. Bye-bye.